Throughout his career, Orson Welles was a passionate believer in makeup as a natural part of an actor's performance, especially for himself. He disliked his own features, especially his nose, which gave him a cherubic appearance and made his face photograph in a flat, uninteresting way. To overcome this, and the problem of making Kane age from a youthful 25 to an old man in his mid 70s, Wells hired a non union makeup artist named Morris Siderman, who, uncredited, had worked on such films as Mary of Scotland, Gunga Din, and The Swiss Family Robinson. What the RKO front office demanded was that the young Kane should be handsome and dashing. Now, Wells was more than six feet tall, but already a touch overweight. Siderman, however, set out to give him the virile appearance of a Clark Gable or a Gary Cooper. The cherubic nose was the first thing to tackle. As Wells recalled in Peter Bogdanovich's book, I always had that terrible round moon face and it was all faked up with fish skins and tucked under the hair. So I was just as made up as a young man as I was as an old man. I could hardly move for the corsets and the fish skin and everything else. Siderman made sculptures of Wells and the other characters at different stages in their lives. Over Wells's head, he would sew a plastic skull cover to carry a wig. Then he would apply plastic strips over the nose, chin, and eye sockets. In those days, makeup was unsophisticated and, in most cases, unconvincing. For instance, wrinkles once applied were so restricting that the actor could neither smile nor frown. Siderman, however, invented a process that allowed flexibility and let the wrinkles come back into place and the jowls move in a natural manner, whatever the actor did. He applied a red plastic compound of his own devising to the face and covered it with liquid grease paint, adding the wig and false teeth and special contact lenses that made the eyes less bright. Wells himself added the final touch by mastering the walk and mannerisms of an old man. Kane's moustache was made up of separate tufts of hair and had to be convincing because it would figure in one of the most famous close-ups in cinema history. As the character aged, the makeup process took longer and longer, often as much as six or seven hours. This meant that Wells had to arrive at the studio at 2.30 in the morning to be ready to start shooting at nine. His daily production conferences were held while he was in the makeup chair. Indeed, throughout the three months of shooting, he would sometimes work as many as 16 or 18 hours a day. Even injury couldn't stop him. In one scene, he fell and fractured a bone in his ankle, but undeterred, he shot around his own scenes and directed from a wheelchair until he could walk again with the help of a steel brace around his ankle. Well, maybe he could do all that because he was only 25, but what an achievement for a man of 25. <laughs>